Good evening, gentlemen. Lawrence of Asia coming at you once again here from Seoul, South Korea. We've got the birds chirping. Like, comment, and please subscribe. If you do find real value in the message, you're welcome to share it as well, or maybe one of my other videos. But anyway, gentlemen, hope you all are doing well. Just got through with the small workout here in the park. Uh, got 100 push-ups under my belt thus far today, so something is better than nothing, gentlemen. All right, um, today I want to talk about monk mode in marriage, while in marriage. Now, gentlemen, I can say for sure that I first chased down my girl after the impulse. I was practicing semen retention, no fap, when I met my girl. In Bali, Indonesia, I still remember, I was sitting there at the sushi restaurant. She walked by very confidently, maybe even, yeah, just I would just say confidently. She gave me an eye, and I chased her down the street. She was wearing short booty shorts, dressing sexy, skin-tight clothing, you know. So, gentlemen, I have to be responsible for the fact that I first chased down a woman and pursued a woman for those 10 days I was with her, it was just, it was lustful, right? I didn't think I would be with the girl. I didn't pursue her. Uh, she reached out to me. We ended up being together. We had two children. The thing is, gentlemen, there have always been red flags in this relationship. Not so much the first 10 days we met, but even then, a little bit. And uh, definitely the other times, the subsequent times we met after that, where we spent a month in Bali, a month in Thailand, etc., there were lots of red flags. And there's never been a time in this relationship, sad to say, where there weren't red flags uh, at least every week, every 10 days, maybe max, right? Um, two weeks, definitely max, um, as far as I can remember. Uh, always, generally, it's every three, four, five days, uh, big, big red flags, lack of respect, etc., etc. Problematic. Um, a very contentious and quarrelsome woman, okay? Now, I have to take full responsibility for that because I pursued her. I should have been wiser and I should have been looking out for women that were more modest that had a more peaceful spirit, but I was leading with lust. So gentlemen, when you're choosing someone to be with long-term, a wife, someone to have children with, do not, this is, a, this is gold, gold advice right here, do not lead with lust. Do not give yourself to the woman that is not and does not want to be modest right? A woman who's always challenging and contentious, quarrelsome, argumentative. You want a woman who hears you and respects what you say when you're being fair and uh, doesn't try to argue all the time. So let's get to it, gentlemen. I'm on monk mode and I'm married, right? Now, I'm not happy in this relationship. Okay. I love my children. That's grand and beautiful. And there's oftentimes things are good for a while and then they get really problematic again. And you see where we have these strong differences and lack of respect, right? So I have to take responsibility for the fact that I pursued this woman, right? But what always held us together was we'd have these issues we'd have these problems we'd fight argue right and she'd most of the time be leaving nowadays she's not so much leaving i just walk out of the house when there's an argument i can't i can't be bothered to engage in that argumentative energy right and anyway gentlemen here's the point is that the lust always held us together so we would make up and we would have this what would become lustful sex and I bought into that for years. Now, before I met her, I was practicing semen retention. I was celibate. I was a monk, more or less. I was in the gym. And I was practicing my monk life. Uh, I've been a, a real monk, by the way. Uh, lived in temples, etc., etc. Um, also, but I was practicing a loose-knit monk life, for real. When I met her and the 
eight years prior to meeting her uh, for a big portion of it as well. Well, gentlemen, I always sensed, especially when I was first with her, right? I always sensed that some part of me did not want to go along with that lustful sex. It felt like I was somehow selling myself short. That I was performing in a way that I didn't necessarily want to perform, but I did it because I knew that's what she wanted. So that demon of lust also entered me, right? And I became this, you know, lustful lover, so to speak, right? And the disrespect, gentlemen, has always been a thing. We'd always make up with the lustful sex, though I've been on the verge and been thinking about for a long time, years probably, where I've told myself, okay, how about you just take it all away from me, you just keep it all for yourself? But I would always give in to the lust. And to be honest, I realized that I didn't have control over it. I would promise myself that I was not going to engage with her. She'd you know, speak some sweet words in my ear, make me believe that everything was good and that she was really, that we were really in order and that she was in line. She'd make me believe she was submissive or whatnot, right? And I'd be so close to her that I'd start to get aroused and I'd be like, okay, everything's okay. And we would just go at it, right? And then things would be good for a while, you know, usually a day and a half or so. And then, but she constantly wanted that. So our whole relationship has been based on this lust, right? It's been the glue that's held us together, so to speak. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't this deep um, divine love or something like that. It wasn't this uh, unconditional love or it wasn't this... Um, I don't know if it's agape or what, uh, uh, eros I think is more lustful, but I don't know what type of love you want to call it. The Greeks have like seven different labels for different types of love, but it wasn't pure, let's say that, right? And I found that, you know, one way that you connect with someone, your friends in general or, or different people, it could be guys or girls, is that, you know, you share conversation and you 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 share ideas and there's a friendliness in the conversation and there's uh, points to be made etc conversation moves right the energy moves well i i found that so many times when i'm having conversations with her that the energy doesn't move she's often very unresponsive and it's like i'm trying to have a conversation with her and it just goes to her and she doesn't hit the ball back so to speak right doesn't acknowledge what I'm saying, right? So anyway, um, here in the, this is really the nut and bolts of this video, gentlemen. Hope you're still with me. Um, I've come to the conclusion, and I've been practicing um, nofap, semen retention, celibacy with her for the last 45 days or so. It's been about 45 days. Yeah, right at right at around 43, 45 days or so. And I've now come to the conclusion and the hard understanding. I'm going to give you guys the, the big, a, a very big tip at the end on how to overcome this. But I've been coming to the conclusion that I'm selling myself short. If I'm giving of myself, my energy, my seed, right, my life force to her, if... she is not upholding the virtues and the values and the behavior that I wish to see from her, if she's disrespecting me on a regular basis, then I should not be making love with her, even if, and make up sex, even if she's been good for an hour, right? She needs to prove herself over a period of time that she has some control, right? Now, I've, because I have the children and all, I've come to a loss for what to do or how to instruct her. And I try to talk to her and 
it just ends up in an argument. She doesn't, or it doesn't seem like she quite hears me. So you all may take this advice, gentlemen, if you're struggling with the same thing. And I think there's probably millions of frustrated fathers, husbands, right, that are looking for a way to deal with their wife. And they want things to come into harmony, but they don't know how. Now, I don't know that my household will come into harmony or that she'll fall in line and, and, and submit or pay respect, right? Uh, I don't know that she will, but what I've been doing, gentlemen, is I have been, you know, seeking, seeking divine truth. I've been, I've been celibate, right? I've been meditating a lot, and different information uh, has led me to and towards different channels that are uh, citing the Bible and the Word of God in the Bible. And I've started to dig into this more and more and more in the last couple weeks. And I see that there's so much wisdom in the Bible, especially for us men, as a way, as a guideline, as parameters and guideline for how we ought to orient ourselves in the relationship, but also how wives should orient themselves in a relationship. And also what you should do as a man if a woman is out of line, if a woman is a quarrelsome and contentious wife, says that a man is better to be in the wilderness than to be in the same home as her. Pretty telling. So you're, you can leave. You have permission to leave, gentlemen. Uh, if you're being respectful, righteous, and just, and she's not, she's just creating drama for no reason, you don't have to be in the home. You have that power, gentlemen. And you have that power also according to Scripture, right? And what I've realized is there's all these gray areas. And women, see, men are, men are meant to bring order, and women want to create flexibility. That's how we're biologically programmed, so to speak. So they're always wanting to create more flexibility. And I'm realizing the parameters the guidelines, the roles that we are meant to play as men and women, husband and wife, partners in a relationship, uh, they're really, you know, it's not like it's just black and white and clearly laid out, but if you read carefully, there's so much information there and it's just subtly put there um, without being exactly direct, but there's so much wisdom in these verses in the scripture, gentlemen. So I found it as a huge help, and it's given me something to base my decision on. Now, I realize that I'm growing in spirit, that every day is becoming richer and richer as a result of this abstinence journey, this semen retention, no fap journey, as the newcomers like to call it. And I'm wakening up to this liveliness, this joyousness, this strength, and this power that I used to have. Now, interesting fact, it takes 72 days approximately for sperm to mature. So most men, 99, 98% of men, are busting a nut every two, three, four, five days, right? And they're never, their sperm is never maturing. They're not reaching the height of their, uh, their willpower and potentiality. And this is subtle, gentlemen, but uh, you know, your, your seed feeds your brain. It feeds your overall vigor for life. And when you don't excrete it, and rather you bring it, you keep it, and it you bring it up through your body. Now, there are practices to bring up this energy to the heart, to the mind, where you basically do a Kegel, you pull in, like you're trying to stop pissing, you pull in on your nuts and you, you hold it, and you imagine the energy coming up through your heart, coming up through your spine, and you'll even feel sometimes, after, after some time, you'll feel a tingling coming up your spine, and you'll even feel the Kundalini rising, and sometimes you'll just uncontrollably shake, right? That's the kundalini. That's the, as they call the serpent energy that you're keeping within you. So you control the serpent energy and it raises up through into the mind, eventually through the heart and through the mind. And it opens up the third eye. 
you start to see with more discernment and more wisdom. More clarity, more conviction. Okay, here is the big tip, gentlemen. I've been praying. I've been praying to God, Jesus. I've been praying. I say, dear Lord, Heavenly Father, please protect me against the demon of lust. And I say this upon waking because I tell you, no woman has ever had that lustful control over me the way that this one has. Now, I gave it to her, right? But she has that. Even after two children, she still kind of has it. But, gentlemen, I'm no longer going into that lustful mind. Uh, I went out the other night with a friend wanted me to join him. I went out with a friend. We went out to some different bars. And, you know, I just did not find myself lusting after any woman. Uh, something I've been praying about. So it might seem empty or, or silly, right? But I've been praying, dear Lord, Heavenly Father, please protect me against the demon of lust. So it's an intention that I'm setting. It's a prayer that I'm praying. And it has been helping immensely. Remember, gentlemen, I said at the beginning of this video that I had set my intentions prior that I'm not going to mess around with this girl. What I'm going to keep this. And I found myself engaging anyway and even if you lose a drop gentlemen even if you lose a drop you're losing so much it's not just a drop it's equivalent to like 20 drops of blood or more and it's so much more than that gentlemen those are probably your most mature sperm <laughs> and I don't know how the whole body functions gentlemen but you lose a lot when you lose even a drop with a woman. So now, um, one, due to the severe irritation that I have felt, and two, due to the, the sincere will to draw closer to God. And it's this, it's this disgust there's this immense disgust I have with the roller coaster of my life, right? Now, also, when you lose your sperm, gentlemen, your emotional state is out of whack as a man. You're not able to maintain the same degree of stability, stoicness. And you can find yourself depressed after you let all your energy go. You find yourself low, no drive, no joy. All the joy of life is gone. You don't even want to go out and meet your friends. It's like, why, right? So that is your life force, gentlemen. You want to keep it. Now, my girl was my perfect 10 look-wise, right? But a girl with a bad spirit, an evil spirit. If you're not in the state of lust, that woman is not beautiful whatsoever. When you're keeping your energy and you start to get more clairvoyance, you start to get more uh, insight into others' intentions, get more clear about your own intentions as well, and you start reaching for God's heart, or you start spiraling upwards, you decide you're going to spiral upwards, that you're going to keep raising your vibration, and you make that your point of origin, and you make that your focus. You'll realize, gentlemen, as I mentioned to you on the 7th of last month, when I said that I'm going to go on this NoFab journey for 30 days, this challenge. Then at the 30-day mark, I said that why don't I just make this a way of life? And I was still messing around and engaging with her the, those 30 days. Now that I have stopped that, 
the attraction is less and less and less. I think she might just want the D. Okay, but she's not earned it. She's not behaving in a way consistently, nor has she ever consistently ongoing. Because you can do it, you can, it's, it's easy to be good when everything's good, right? Three days, five days, but I need to see, I need to see a good spirited, a calm woman for a month. That's something she's going to have to cultivate on her own. I can't make her cultivate that. I don't know that she'll become, you know, for me, I'm letting go of the demon of lust. Can she let go of the demon of lust? Can she become a, a, a pure and good hearted soul herself or was she ever? Does she have that in her? I think she does, but she's got some things holding her back. And she, maybe she was spoiled, this, that, or the other. I don't mean to gossip about her. I'm just trying to give insight. I don't think, uh, you know, you watching the channel know her, so to speak. So I'm not trying to, this is not me gossiping about her. This is me sharing so that perhaps I can give you gentlemen insight as to how I'm thinking. And it may help you all as well with your situation. But gentlemen, again, like I said at the beginning of this video, when you are picking a partner, a wife, don't go for the woman that insists upon dressing sexy. If she's not okay being a modest woman and she wants all the attention from the outside world, once you marry and once you have children, you'll see that that might not sit well with you that might take you out of your peace and your contentedness, gentlemen. And so much of the culture has taught us to be okay with that, has taught women that that's how they should dress, that, that that's how they'll get attention. But gentlemen, that's the wrong type of attention. A woman should be appreciated for her spirit, not her sexiness, right? For her character. But we've not taught women that. The culture hasn't taught women that. So, like I said, gentlemen, that prayer... Now, a lot of you don't want to overcome the demon of lust. You're perfectly happy in that, engaging with that lustful state. And I get it. I get it. But, let me assure you that if you're truly seeking God's heart, if you're truly seeking deeper truth within yourself and all of life outside of yourself, about reality of yourself and this life, God, if you're sincere in your seeking and you practice the semen retention, the celibacy, the no fat, right? If you practice that, and you are and you are determined and you're persevering in this practice you're persevering in seeking God's heart with sincerity life will show itself to you in a way that you've never seen it before synchronicities will start to come to you. I talked to a friend recently and he said, you know, synchronicity is the result of one reaching true homeostasis, the, the state that we're supposed to be living in all the time, right? Like the Garden of Eden was homeostasis for us, right? When we reach this state of homeostasis, And our energy is raised. I can't promise you, but I can just say from experience that I have experienced a very high degree frequency of synchronicity. 
synchronicity is essentially defined as events transpiring far beyond probability or statistics or chance. It's basically like God winking at you and showing you that this universe is not by chance. That there is more. And it's and it, these synchronicities can be absolutely undeniable. I, I think of them as winks from God, winks from the divine. For me, that's worth living for, those synchronicities, those winks from the divine. It's as though I'm in touch with something greater than myself. It's like God's talking to me through nature and life itself. And it sounds crazy. I know it sounds crazy for anyone who has not experienced this, right? It doesn't make any sense, right? But this is experiential wisdom and knowledge that is there if one is sincere on the path of reaching God's heart, reaching for God's heart, uh, reaching for truth, sincerity within oneself and the outside world. And I heard it said before, I don't know if this is exactly quoted in the Bible or not, but that your relationship with the divine is a reflection. Your relationship with the outside world is a reflection with, is a reflection of the relationship that you have with the divine. So gentlemen, you don't have to be in a home with a quarrelsome and contentious wife. You can pray for your wife. You can share things. Now, I've not been one to share these Bible verses nor lead with Christianity and, and the Bible and so forth in our home. I came to a real, a real loss as to as as for what it is that I could do, like a last a last straw. Now, this probably should have been something that I reverted to a long time ago. But there's been a lot of lessons in this journey of not having done so as well. So, you know, practice abstinence retention in marriage. Now, you could also be with your wife and you can mess around, make love, is that the same as fornicating? I don't know. To me, it, even in marriage, it's some, sometimes it just always feels lustful, right? But um, maybe that's because of the one that I'm with now, right? But anyway, you do not have to release, gentlemen. Keep it at the threshold of 60 to at most 70% pleasure and no more. Just have control of that. Have control of your energy. But better yet, don't engage with it at all. Just keep seeking God. Bring your energy up. Keep seeking God. Because with wisdom and experience, you'll realize that this is so much better than that short-term pleasure. And it's not worth playing around and making a mess of yourself. Making a mess of your life. You are guaranteed. You are guaranteed a beautiful life if you can maintain and reach for truth in the divine. I, I will guarantee you that. Don't do it. Don't do this journey, gentlemen. This no fap, abstinence, semen retention journey. Don't do it for a woman. Do it for who you become. And do it for seeking truth, seeking God. Do it because it's the truth. Now, you may not know that, but you can know it through experience it if you practice it. Monk mode and married. Easier if your partner's not as attractive. Easier if she's really pregnant or just had a baby, maybe. Overcome the demon of lust, gentlemen. May ye overcome the demon of lust. Amen. So this I'm praying on a daily basis. And may I remember to pray it on a daily basis. And may you gentlemen find me a year from now glowing like the sun itself. 
<clears throat> yes, gentlemen, why? If you truly respect yourself, if you truly have self-esteem and self-love, why would you give your life force over to a woman who does not, who is proving that she does not respect you? She can say she does, but you should be the determiner of whether or not that is true. You should know that in your heart by her actions. You shall know them by the fruit, by their fruit. And my point is, you know, not only are they not, do they not deserve that from you, but that you are worthy of keeping that for yourself, for one. And you're also worthy of this extraordinary potentiality that awaits you. You're worthy of that. You're worthy of, let me just say, you're worthy of something more. You're worthy of something more. As I'm telling you, I'm telling myself. I'm worthy of something more. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all things will be given unto you. You shall love thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul and all thy strength, I believe is the, the message from God, from Jesus. And thy neighbor as thyself. So put God first, gentlemen. There we go. Put God first in your life. Don't put a woman first in your life. All problems will come from that. Should you put your wife, put any woman before God, as I did. So much pain, heartache, and destruction, even death, sickness, disease, can all come from that. So gentlemen, I'm speaking to you today with the utmost love for myself, respect for myself, and the same love for you gentlemen. I love all you gentlemen, I love everyone here, everyone that may see this, I I love you all, women included, but I have a real care and soft spot in my heart to help men who may be struggling in relationships or with life in general. My father, you may or may not know this gentleman, how much you've uh, followed the channel, but my father took his own life in 2014. The one time that my father was around my mother after their divorce, one of the time, I think it was the first time, um, first time he was around her, my brother was doing this hustle where he was buying a lot of iPads at the um, Apple store. So he had lined up all his friends and he had lined up my mother and father there as well in the same line. And while my father was in line there at the Apple store waiting to buy some of these iPads for my brother so he could hustle and make a hundred bucks per iPad or whatever, my father had a heart attack. And I don't remember exactly how long it was after that, but something around a year or probably less than two years after that heart attack, he took his own life. I love my father more than any person on this planet. And I knew that. I knew it wasn't my mother. I reckon I loved my, I, I loved my father more than my brother. I can't say for sure, you know, you don't know, but... I reckon I did, and uh, yeah, he took his life. 
and I thought, wow, he's got a lot of he got a lot of courage. But yes, I think he had some he had some uh, he had opened some gateways he should not have. Anyway, he was uh, he was suffering for a long time. He probably wasn't on semen retention. Wish I could laugh with him again. He was a great man, great father. Um, he sacrificed all for me and my brother. Just watching the spider dangling in the wind right here close to uh, my camera here. He's blowing back and forth with the wind. Um, yeah, my father coached us in baseball, always championship teams, all-stars as well. Every year we were first place, aside from the... Aside from the first year my father coached when I was seven, every year after that, we were first place. He was always all-star coach. Great father, great man, great coach. Greatest coach I've ever seen with my eyes. And I've had a number of people tell me the same thing, childhood friends. Without me even mentioning my father, they just go out of their way to tell me he was like the best father and the best coach they've ever seen in their life. If you guys want some coaching, <laughs> I come from a line of I come from a line of coaches. Um, later, we went on to race motocross. I was semi-professional in America at the age of 12. One of the top 40 riders in the ADCC class in America. Yeah, our father put a lot of time into us. So we were every day after school, my father would show up with the motorcycles, with the motocross bikes, ready to go, cleaned up, and we go practice every evening for two, out, two, three hours, go home, eat dinner, go to sleep, go to school, next day, same thing. And then on the weekends, even some Wednesday nights, we would go race um, all throughout the Southeast of America. I had like a room full of trophies when I was young, just giant trophies, whole room full of trophies. I'm not saying that to brag, gentlemen, just, uh, just sharing with you. I'm, because I'm proud of my father, really. You know, I'm proud of what, I'm proud and, and grateful for all the love and energy that he put into us. He showed me unconditional love. I remember this as well, gentlemen, and happy Father's Day, because it's probably still Father's Day in America at the moment, but I remember this about my father, that I had wrecked the first car that I, I had gotten. I was 16, right? And uh, I had saved up about three grand myself from mowing grass from the age of eight or nine. I had saved up three grand of my own. My father put in some money and I got a Honda Civic. I traded that for another Honda Civic. And, um, you know, it was all kind of sported out back in the 1990s or so, or 2000 or whatnot, whatnot. Anyway, I was with some friends and we were pretending like we were racing in the rally car race. We had just been watching rally car racing on television. And I, I go around this turn super fast. I mean, I, I was flying all, all throughout these country roads or whatnot. And then my passengers were acting like they were the ones instructing me, just like they do in the rally car racing, right? And we came around this turn. I had the turn. I was going about 85 miles an hour around this turn. I had the turn, but there was a dip in the turn. And so my back tires came into the air, and they just started, they started, started coming sideways like this. So the car was going sideways on the road. Meanwhile, a car passes right by on the other side of the road. Then I counter it, and then the back tires get into the grass, and I just slid all the way across the road, and then flipped upside down and slid through the, through the woods. And there were trees everywhere, but we missed every tree. We just went in this one area where there were no big trees. We missed every tree. We were all totally fine. The car was totaled. And I remember when I came home, the first thing that my father said to me was, you know, I was there with the police. He knew something was up. He's like, he just said, are you okay? Is Chase okay? Is everybody okay? He didn't give a damn about that car, you know? And as, <laughs> as he shouldn't, who gives a damn about the material possessions of this life? The real value, the things of real worth are all given to us at birth. Now, we do make our value as men by becoming the men that we become, but your real value, who you are, gentlemen, the depths of who you are. Yes, they may be discovered in your pursuit of greatness, sure, but all that is truly valuable that can be had in this world is gifted to you at birth. 
the ability to appreciate life, gentlemen. The fact that you're here. The man who is the wealthiest is not the man who is the wealthiest. The man who is the wealthiest, gentlemen, is the man who has the ability to appreciate to the depths of appreciation that you're able to come to within your own heart and soul, gentlemen. That will determine your degree of richness. Because you can have it all, but if you can't appreciate it, you're not rich. So, cultivate that ability to appreciate. I'm so grateful for my wife. I'm so grateful for my children. The fact that I have them, it may not be that we're meant to be together, but I'm so grateful for them. I'm so grateful for this life. I'm so grateful for this spider that's dangling here in front of me, even for the ant biting my, my toe. <laughs> so the highness that you can get here just in appreciation, you know, that mental construction of the mind, the ability to tap in. See, we can, we have that power to raise our frequency we have the power to lower our frequency as well. Gentlemen, don't be in any room that wants you to dim your light. That ain't the room for you. Refuse to dim your light. Never, never dim your light. Subscribe, like, and comment if you do feel so inclined, gentlemen. Share the video if you like. Let me know you made it to the end if you feel so inclined as you like. Love you, gentlemen. I'm going to show you all this spider. It's been dangling here the whole time, and then I'm going to say peace, all right? Now, I don't know you'll be able to see it or not because I can't see the camera, but I'm going to get really close, and hopefully you can see that. That's a spider that's been dangling. Gentlemen, what are you working on? Do you want to travel? You don't need much to do it. Two grand will be sufficient to go on a long journey. Three, four months, you don't need a lot. You don't need to do it in a fancy way. Make it a pilgrimage. You can camp sometimes. You can get you a hammock, something called the Hennessy hammock. It has a built-in bug net. You can probably get something like it now for next to nothing. 30, 40 bucks. Hostelworld.com, cheap places to stay, meet friends from all around the world. You can hitchhike. The flights are the most expensive aspect of flying generally. Skyscanner.com is where they can be found, usually for the cheapest. I wish to see you gentlemen do well for yourself. I'll be traveling in Asia very soon, whether it's with my family or on my own, I don't know thus far. Waiting for God to show me. I love you, gentlemen. God bless. Stay sharp. Stay centered. Keep God first. Know your worth. Respect yourself, love yourself. Put God first and may all things be given unto you. All right, God bless gentlemen, peace.